2 Peter chapter 2, in the first verse, the Bible says, But there were false prophets also among the people, as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by, re by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness they shall, with feigned words, make merchandise of you, whose judgment now a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them unto the chains of darkness to be reserved into judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly men, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow making them as an example unto those that after, were, that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for, what righteous, for that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds." And the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil, evil of dignities, whereas angels are greater in power and might, not railing bring not a railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute, brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of things they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they count it pleasure to write in, in the daytime, spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls on heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for your word. Lord, we praise you how it speaks to our soul from time to time and becomes more than just, just words written on a page, but rather the, the full counsel of God. Lord, tonight we pray that you would grant us that, that we would understand your word with a spiritual ear rather than ears of this flesh. Lord, that you would send the Holy Spirit this way and that you would uh, uh, convict the lost of their sins, Lord, and that you would stir us up as your people here at Dover to be mindful of your truths and give us compassion for men's soul. And we pray these things in the sweet and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, some fairly familiar verses of Scripture as Peter writes to a number of churches. If I understand the text of this Scripture, it went out to a number of churches and they all read it and they all feasted on it and they all took counsel from this Word. Uh, as Peter is writing here, he gets into what uh, a lot of churches don't want to address today, and that what uh, Peter says here is dam damnable heresies. In other words, uh, saying to someone in the most kind way possible, no, you're wrong. Uh, in the kindest way possible, say that there is no redemption in baptism. In the nicest way possible, that's receiving the Holy Ghost is not 
flopping on the floor in the nicest way possible, saying that baby baptizing uh, babies is an error from the scripture. And that is a very, very hard thing to do. But what tolerance yields is what we have today. Afraid to say anything to anyone, uh, I don't think is an option which the, in the day in which we live, but it is very difficult, especially if you have family or close friends that are caught up in some of this other stuff and trying to say, no, that is not what the scripture teaches. And I believe Peter gives us an encouragement in that. He begins, but there shall be false prophets or preachers also among the people. Now, he was really for, referring back to the first of his writing, chapter 1, the way that it's divided, and he was making allusions to false prophets in the time of Moses and, and how they would rise up and try to divide and split the people and get a certain group to follow them or do this or that. And now he says, just as that was in the Old Testament, it's carrying forward in the church age, and it will be part of what you deal with as, as well. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately or privily shall bring in damnable heresies. Now, a heresy is a false teaching, and it, it should be identified as such and be avoided. You know why uh, uh, the sinner's prayer came into being? Apparently somebody would have, did not have uh, the, the strength enough to say, that's wrong. That isn't what the Bible teaches. That isn't what Baptists have historically believed. And no one said it till today. Many think that is the common theme of the Baptists. It is not. And, and so he makes this prediction and says these things are going to happen. And not only are these heresies wrong, they're damnable. Uh, they damn souls. They, they, they corrupt people. They corrupt churches. And this is how they have to be dealt with. Even denying the Lord that bought them. Now these individuals, you think about who denies the efficacy of the sacrifice. Uh, Catholics, they, they, they doubt the sufficiency of Christ. Uh, Campbellite people doubt the sufficiency of Christ. In fact, I can't think of any group besides Baptist people that believe that salvation is completely of the Lord and it's sufficient in that. Uh, I can't think of any group that purports that besides us. And, and he says they're, they're bringing this in. And have you ever thought, if, and I could imagine living with a works-based salvation, but could you imagine living in a situation that, that placed you in that? But what does it? The pride of man's heart. You know what? We want to work for something. That's our nature. And that's why in Peter's day, even then, it was started. Notice what he says at the last of it. That, that bought them, denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. Now, you think about today, how many people just say, now, according to Kenny, I don't know the, the brother up here at First Baptist. I've never met him, wouldn't know him. He walked in the building tonight. But supposedly he believes some truth. But is that what they're purporting down there? And what are they saying to young children concerning the salvation of the Lord? Are they saying this is how simple it is? This is what you have to do? Well, most Southern Baptist churches do that, do they not? And so, I mean, I don't know, but I would have to assume the biggest one in our county that they must be doing the same thing as the rest. You know what? That's a pernicious way. You know what pernicious means? It means small and weak. Small and weak. Which is easier to do? Say, well, believe what you want to. Or to say, this is what the scriptures teach. Mm. I can tell you that the easy thing is, well, you do it that way, I'll do it this way, and everybody be fine. You know what that is? That's a pernicious way. That's not the way that it's to be handled. And believe me, I've been in those situations, and it's very, very difficult, 
and you won't be loved for it, you won't be liked for it, but I believe that is what Peter is giving us to do. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. The way of grace will be belittled. The way of grace, and just simply by the merit of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know what? People literally laugh at that today. But you know how it came to be that that was comical? Because people purported to be saved and lived like dogs. That, that's how it came to be. And, and, and you know how uh, he said, uh, how th that's where your little sinner's prayer will get you. It will get you a bunch of lost people that is trying to make up a church. And you know what lost people do? They live like lost people. Because that's their nature. That's what they're driven to do. That's what they're going to do. And, and, and so we find uh, as uh, Peter is teaching here, he says many uh, that they actually go in this small directed way and on top of that they, they belittle the truth and we find that time and time again in the in the modern day verse 3 and through covetousness they shall with feigned words make merchandise of you now uh, what merchandise is something that you sell yeah. that's something that you sell away from you. And it says with feigned words, with pleasing words, with, uh, with romantic language, they're going to sell you. They're going to give you away. See, it is very difficult to be direct about what you believe, is it not? It's very difficult to say, no, I just, I can't see that in the Scripture. Especially when it's someone you love. And, and, and so we see that the that this warning comes that they're going to do us that way. Whose judgment now a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. In other words, when they're gone, they're going to find out. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the, the old world. Now, um, you, you think about that a minute, the entirety of the population of this earth. Now, in the days of Noah, uh, I, I don't know how many people was it living. Uh, it had been a number of generations, 10, I think. Jared could probably do better with that than me, from Adam to Noah. And whatever they produced in those years is how many people there were. Uh, I read somewhere the other day, I think it says like 7 billion people on the earth now. And can you imagine them all being destroyed in 40 days except for 8 people? See, that's the Lord God's attitude toward sin. And, and so what... Uh, what made Noah different? Grace. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's the only thing different. He wasn't, he wasn't an exceptional man. He wasn't a good shipbuilder. None of that stuff. He just found grace. And so we find here that Peter, referring to the old world, says, And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness. Now, I think it's in First Peter, actually, the same writer, or maybe James. Uh, it says, and they were baptized. And man, uh, Church of Christ people will flip over sideways about that one. But here we just said that he was a preacher of righteousness. You know what? We live in a day where preaching righteous living is just about gone. You know, grace, 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 grace. And, and that is wonderful. But what about preaching on the results of grace? What's grace done in your life? What was the result of your, of your experience with the Lord Jesus Christ? I think that's equally important. What was this grace? I think it's uh, 
what what is it? Uh, it's either uh, Genesis six nine. I think it's Genesis eight nine. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. What did it cause him? He got instructions from the Lord and he began to move on. And see, if it wasn't if it wasn't for grace, those instructions would have meant nothing to him. Because they were literally the word of God. And, and, and so we see then that as huh, all these years of preparing the ark, it says that he was a preacher. He was preaching righteousness uh, and the coming uh, and the coming judgment, uh, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and, and to ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Look at the day which we uh, were living in. You remember uh, uh, the the and I, again, I personally believe it was the Godhead because um, Lot wasn't corrected for bowing to them, if you'll remember, and. They, they first said, we're going to spend out, uh, it was two of them, I believe the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus Christ, and said, we're going to spend the night in the street. And he said, not so. And you remember those ungodly men uh, beating on the door and said, let them men out so we may know them. And they just weren't wanting to say, hey, Jared, I want to, uh, I want to know what you're doing. They wanted ungodly relationship. They were so overwhelmed with that sin that if anybody new came to town, that was their desire. Can you believe such a filthy, ungodly age? Well, we're there. Amen. Yeah. Uh, we're there. Yeah. And, and so we see then uh, judgment came to those cities. Judgment came to those defined areas. You know, uh, judgment of God is just it's just as particular as redemption. You believe in particular redemption, don't you? A specific atonement? Well, you, if you believe in that, the only other result that, that, that God's judgment is specific to you. And so we find these two huge cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, and, and the fire that rained down just hit those two cities. Can you imagine living on the outskirts in a little town about the size of Dover and, and you see the ungodly judgment just a few miles from you specific to those people. God's judgment is as specific as his atonement. And, and so we find that as well. He said these are our example. Verse 7, and deliver just lot Vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Now, to be vexed means to be overwhelmed. To be vexed means to be sick. That's, that's one meaning of the word. Being uh, vexed means to be slowed down. You know, we're slowed down in the modern day, are we not? You know, uh, as much as we try, the, filthy, the filthiness of this world, world will still slow us down, will it not? And it drag us down. I mean, you can't, even, you can't even get on your phone without seeing some ungodly, filthy something before you even get to scroll by, right? Your scroller don't scroll that quick. Uh. See, that's the day which we live. And, and, and you know what? I criticize a lot, and not this... Deserves criticism, but we're there too. Things that used to make us blush don't make us blush no more. We've been exposed to it and re-exposed to it and exposed to it. To I mean, there's no embarrassment in it anymore. And, and so we find then that Lot uh, <laughs> was just paralyzed by the sin that was around him. For that righteous man, so he was saved, for that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Now, you think about yourself, and I was in this meeting today, Donna called me when I was in it, it's kind of one of the new uh, uh, things that I took over when I took my new job. And, you know, we was going through these papers and kind of read about people and then, uh, yeah, their recommendations, we make changes, stuff like that. And they got talking about music. 
And, uh, and they was looking at me and they said, well, we've lost Larry again. I had no idea what they're talking about. And, and I'm sure my blank expression, you know what? Good. Good. Well, Larry, that song came out in 95. And I said, well, by the time 95 rolled around, I was preaching the gospel. See, I, I, I like that, don't you? I don't know what song they were talking about, but it did sound very nice to me. And I didn't want to know about it. Because, you know, and again, not that I'm exempt, but that's one vexation that I don't guess I'll never will because they, you know, when I, I said, I don't even know what you're talking about, they shut up. <laughs> right? That's one vexation <laughs> that, uh, that I don't have to deal with. And, and, and so we find that that is the situation as it was even in Lot's day. And, and Lot was delivered, but not without injury to the spirit. You know, that's a pretty scary thought, isn't it? Right. Uh, uh, verse 8, uh, verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust to the day of judgment to be punished. He can, he knows how to deliver us, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness. You know what? There are churches... That are just mushrooming. You know what? It's because they're full of this stuff. Um, everything's okay and nothing's wrong. You know what? You can feel a building pretty quick with that, can't you, Jerry? And that, that's what was going on. This generation, these people that Peter was warning the churches about. These are going to be their earmarks. These are going to be their icons. They're going to present in this way. Be wary of them. Verse 11. Whereas. Let me read the end of verse 10. We may close there. Uh, presumptuous, meaning these individuals. Presumptuous are they. Self-willed. Now you think about that a minute. What gospel does 99.99% of people preach? It's a self-willed gospel. Save yourself while there's time. Whether it's sinner's prayer, or whether it's being dunked in the baptismal pool, or whether it's kissing the Pope on the face, or whatever it is, it's a self-willed gospel. You can do it, do it. Yeah. But that, that, that's, that's everybody else. And you know why? People do not want to hear they're hopeless and helpless unless Christ intervenes. That's pretty sober and stuff, isn't it? And, and, and so we find then that this is no new drama and this is no new difficulty for the Lord's churches that it's always been this way, and Paul even warned about it then. Notice what else they do. They speak evil of dignities. Now, a dignity is someone who has rule over you. Now, I'm not going to get deep into politics because I always end up getting myself in trouble. But you know what? Like it or don't like it, uh, our president is Joe Biden. And my responsibility is to pray for that man. Amen. Right. I'm not going to speak evil of dignities. You know, when President Trump was president, all my friends just ran him down and beat him up and ran him down. You know what? They were doing exactly what their spirit directs them to do. Somebody asked me one day, what do you think about it? And, you know, if you're a nurse, you know everything. You know, they think you do. Do you think he has Alzheimer's? I'm like, well, I don't know. I think the man's under a lot of stress. <laughs> but I'm not going to speak evil of him. I've barely even seen the man. So what, what could I possibly contribute to say if he's a good man or a bad man? I'm going to just pray for him. Best I could, and sometimes it's like slamming my head against that oak. I tried to pray for President Obama, and that was a challenge. See, these people, and you think about what's going on today, they drive 
everybody in the mud. Everybody. So he, he, he warned us, this is the stripe of people that's going to be in opposition to you. Verse 12. But these, as natural brute beasts, again, their nature demands this, made to be, ta uh, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evils, speak evil of the things they understand not. Yeah. Why do they make fun of grace? I don't know nothing about it. Right. You know, that, that shouldn't bring anger to God's people's heart. It should bring pity. When you see someone clinging, clinging so hard to works, don't get mad at them. You know, if it wasn't for the goodness of God, that'd be you. And maybe worse. Mm -hmm. and, and so we find then that these are hallmarks and earmarks of people, and they're going to make fun of grace. And shall utterly perish in their own corruption. That's right. How does a church get corrupted? And. Uh, I'll tell, the, I'll tell you this. It only takes one person You're and right. one generation. You're right. And the church that was formerly there, people don't even know that it existed. 